like the Eve of Gisfalchia. Yeah. Hi, hello and welcome to John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School. And have you ever wondered if things we do in our world affect the landscape of the other world? Well, stick around and I'll do my best to answer that question for you. But before we dive into that, I'd like to invite you to pick up some free resources. All you got to do is go to irishpagan.school forward slash free. We have over a year's worth of kind of content, teaching, classes, recordings, meditations, book lists, everything you could want to kind of get your ground on you, to get like up and going and get started. Um, and then also go to the Irish Pagan School itself and pick up like, you know, the detailed go deeper with the learning and the experiences there in our school for, for more teaching. But yeah, to go back to this, it's a question that came up and it's a fascinating one. It's an interesting one. Um, this person was wondering if the people of the she, the people of the other world, are invested in the nature or the natural order, the preservation of nature in our world, um, and whether or not the the ecological disasters that are happening in our world causes them to be frustrated, annoyed, or whether or not some things that we do in our world impacts the landscape of the other world. And it is a very fascinating question, and it's a very interesting question. And I think we need to look at this through a couple of different lenses, if that makes sense. And I suppose the first one really is taking it back to what is the other world. Now, I did a, a video on this. It's it's another world. It's not an underworld. It's not a hellscape or anything like that. Um, the other world, or on sale, Ella, as it said in Irish, is is the other life. So it is other places it's, it's like parallel universe it's an alternate dimension that runs a side long a line with our reality and there's many stories in our mythological past but then also in more recent folklore of people having experiences stepping over or journeying into the other world or interacting with beings that have come from the other world into ours so um the reason why things get a little bit more complex around that is um the the fact that the entities, the creatures, the people of the other world predominantly aren't of our world. Um, and so like they're invested in their own world, their own existence, their own reality. Now, some of the people in the other world, um, the Aish she in specific, the which is kind of a higher or noble class of she, um, are ancestor deities from our world. People like the Dagda, the Morrigan. Nuada, Lu, all of these. So the the Irish gods, the pantheon of Irish gods, are ancestor deities. Like you know, they're not formative gods from the beginnings of all creation. They were descended from tribes that had lived in Ireland previously and had gone out of Ireland to learn skills and occult knowledge and hidden knowledge all around the world, and then came back into Ireland. Um. So those that we point at as Irish deities are ancestor deities. So there would be some reference or some kind of interest in the goings on in our world from that point of view also there are some of these ASG some of these specifically who are invested in bloodlines in families and they are the banshee or the women of the she which of course then leads to the creation or the understanding of the banshee as in the death omen or the one the the wailing kind of spirit which notifies of a, a death within the family um, doesn't cause the death, by the way. We've got amazing classes on the Banshee in like the Irish Pagan School if you want to dive deeper on that. But it's a notice or an omen. And a lot of cases, these are like famously, actually probably the, the big names that you can point at really is, of course, Kleena, um, Avil and Anya are, are three big kind of known to be, they're said to be fairy queens, but it's also these Banshee, these women of the She who are directly linked with bloodlines, um, and descended families in Ireland, uh, Anya for the Fitzgeralds, um, Kleena for the, oh gosh, no, I'm going to get that wrong, so I'm going to stop talking there. Um, but that's where we have these kind of crossovers or these interests from their world into our world. Now, does this mean that they are nature spirits enforcing nature's law or boundaries or invested in ecological circumstances? No. They're not. Um, in other cultures, in other kind of belief structures, there is there are spirits that are directly invested in like the nature in the landscape um, in general and that, you know, who, you know, em embody or kind of speak for the land. Now, this is the next lens we need to talk to, because many of the the deities, the Aeshi, um, are sovereignty goddesses. And sovereignty goddesses, um, their function isn't to speak for the people. The, the king's function or the chieftain's function was to speak for the people. The sovereignty goddess was to speak for the land. Now, we see time and again in all of the mythology and the stories that when 
there is a balance of right relationship between the the right rule, the legal hosp hospitable rule of a king or a chieftain who's wedded to a goddess of sovereignty, that Ireland is an abundant place. It's a beautiful place. It's everything is just, everything is happy, everything is is you know satisfying and fulfilling, and there is no hardship. Um, but when things go out of balance, when there is a um, lack of hospitality, misrule, uh, abuse of power, all these kind of things, then like other world forces come through this focus or maybe lens of the goddesses of sovereignty where the land itself would sicken and become a wasteland until justice was restored or hospitality was restored. So this doesn't exactly mean that they're invested in, in nature itself or defending nature. It's more about the relationships and the interactions that we have. So as we kind of move that lens kind of forward, as we begin to kind of explore like humanity's impacts on our landscape and on our world, is this something that's going to piss off the people of the other world? Maybe in some niche areas, and I'm going to come back to that. I'll cross my fingers so I don't forget. Um, but what is what is most commonly seen, especially in this Aeshi or these kind of goddesses or the deities, they're more invested in the right relationship, in the correct bond, in, you know, justice and hospitality and acting and functioning with honour. And that then leads to the knock on impact of either the land is beautiful and abundant or it's a wasteland and it's a it's terrible circumstance of sickness for the peoples. So um trying to apply the lens of that logic into say, okay, well, they're invested in nature and they're pissed off at humans involvement in nature or humans kind of abuse of nature. It, it's a bit of a step and a stretch and it's, it's missing some nuances there, which is why I, I don't really say, I, I, I don't agree with like that. They are the defenders of nature or that they're invested in nature more than human relationship and circumstance. And um, for the reasons that like, you know, in many cases, their ancestor deities or bloodlines directly descended from these women of the she um this to uncross my fingers now that i'm going to move on to that point there are specific locations on the island of ireland which don't actually belong to us they belong to them and we see this in the folklore and the stories many many times from the mythology right the way down to more modern like Within the last 100 years, there would be lads. And even now in Ireland, there are places that you just don't fuck with. Um, as you travel through Ireland, if you ever have the opportunity to do so, you may travel past like large open fields where agriculture is going on. And you know, I think, oh, this is great. Look at that, that great field of, you know, corn or like, you know, veg or whatever it is. But then in the middle of the field, there's a tree. I was like, well, if, if the farmer took that tree out, then surely he'd be able to plant more. Um, or in the middle of a field, there's like a, a rocky. It's still recording. I don't know what happened. Um, It looks like I'm still recording. And so I'm going to carry on, but... <laughs> just finish the video because you know yeah I, I think i just need to finish on the video and we're going to leave this raw and unedited um and we'll i'll double back and check to it but i don't know whether you could hear or see still but at the mention of trees alone in fields or or rocky kind of formations in farmers fields um yeah it seems my technology decided to have an interruption to maybe warn me to be careful about what I'm speaking of. And that really is the, the real lived experience of on this Island. Like, you know, there are many, like even my partner, Laura um, was asked by a property developer to assess uh, a tree in, in an estate. They were planning on building a housing estate and Laura was like, no, I'm probably not going to give you much, but I, I'll recommend someone else. And, you know, the information that came back from that tree was that it was a fairy tree or a, a connected with the she. And the developers couldn't get anyone to cut it down. None of the Irish lads would chop down that tree. And, you know, the the, the owner, the property developer, the person like putting all the money into it, like from England was like, can we get that tree? Why is that tree still here? And none of the Irish lads would do it. And so, you know, then he's like, just get one of the Polish lads to do it. But of course, the Polish lads talk to the Irish lads, like, why are you not taking them to the tree? And they, they were told the stories and none of the Polish lads would fucking do it either, you know? And so what happened is they, the property 
architect had to adjust the road slightly so that tree would end up in someone's back garden and therefore wouldn't be cut down. That's what in the last like 40 years, that's what in the last, you know, 20 years has happened. Um, and so we see from the folklore and the mythology time and again that those who fuck with fairy trees or those who fuck with she mounds on their landscape invariably bring hardship upon themselves, invariably bring, you know, again, this this imbalance into their life, either financially or in sickness or in prosperity. Everything is undermined by them fucking with these particular locations. So does this mean that the, the people of Shear invested in the natural order of the entire island? No, but there are places on the island that are specifically theirs. And right the way back to the mythological cycle where um, I believe it was Monan and McLear or was it Midder, one of the deities was coming pursuing, no, it was Midder, it was the wooing of a ton. Um, he's pursuing like a, a relationship of a, a reincarnated or well, a, a, a transubstantiated love of his, a transmigrated love of his, not transubstantiated, um, the, a reborn love of his into a human form. And he's pursuing her and the her husband at that time threatens to like you know get a whole lot of lads we're going to take some iron shovels and go out we're going to dig up the she mount and of course when his lads turn up to do that he finds himself facing off against an entire she host and it doesn't go fucking well so um to wrap it up before i kind of talk too much and talk myself into a, a further technical difficulties um no the the, the people of the she the other world are not invested in natural order or natural balance from the point of view of defending nature against what humanity is doing but there are very clear understandings and very clear guidelines and framework about hospitality right relationship just an honorable rule which dictates the way in which our relationship or our bond between the people of our land and our island is supposed to be maintained and if that goes out of balance then forces of the other world tend to be the the the, the comeuppance maybe or the, the the agencies of rebalancing the books and sometimes that rebalancing is in a place of conflict and sometimes it's in a place of education so hopefully that's been a bit of an answer and i do appreciate the query it's a very very fascinating one if you do have a further question fire it down in the comments we absolutely love having and exploring these questions and if you want to know more about it do pop along pick up your free resources get onto our mailing list Follow us here, like and subscribe in the YouTube or wherever you're seeing this video. Follow us on the podcast if you're experiencing it there, because there's a lot more that we want to keep talking about and sharing with you. So until next time, look after yourself, take care and slán. Goodbye.